This is Signalizer now. It got an update like a year ago and I missed it. It has gotten even better. I still hold it as my favorite pick, although I have a little bit more of a nuanced take, I guess, on it now. Um, I don't think it's the most user-friendly uh, thing to start with, but its triggering section is pretty dang hard to beat. So they now have multi-channel support. You can use it and it has a vector scope and they call it a vector scope like it's supposed to be called and they've got a spectrogram, but we are primarily concerned with the oscilloscope. So there's a few other things in here you need to know about though that are helpful to know about. Um, there is a separate cog setting thing up here. And in here, you could set your refresh rate your um, and your swap interval. And this can make a big difference to how smooth the performance is. Right, and this is like high. It's gonna look choppy because this has been set high. And there is another important setting in here, the history resize. And also, if you don't want this ledger to appear every single time, you're gonna wanna come in here and there's one show legend and you can just choose never and it will never show up. Uh, but I like having it on, it's kind of helpful, I guess. Uh, and here the history size though is set to a thousand, meaning you will not be able to zoom out very far. You are gonna wanna set this to a bigger number right now, mine is set to 10,000. If this number gets too big, you are gonna run into issues with memory. So be a little cautious how big you set this. And there's some uh, other, I believe these are also separate controls. I have not, looked into these tabs in particular, uh, but I've spent a pretty huge amount of time messing with this trigger mode, and I have some tips for you if you're looking to get going. Now, if you just wanna slap it on and do something cool, I can heavily recommend going over to the cog icon and choosing from the presets. They are excellent starting points. So the way the multi-instance works is Every instance of Signalizer sees every other instance. And when you click this icon here, it brings up a mixer. I heavily recommend you name them as you go because it will just have all of them with the same name and then it's impossible to tell what's what. So you're gonna wanna name them as you go. Uh, so the base right now is coming out uh, channels one and two. And then I have an empty channel, which I will explain in a bit and then orchestra and drums. And um, they are routed here on each of these. There's a harmony, there's one on there. This has all the orchestra stuff, there's one on there. And these have, for example, this is the one on the orchestra, its own display. And right now it's seeing just what's on it. And if we were to come in here, if you're looking for just some good starting presets, just go to the presets. Uh, these I don't believe have changed. We have free impulse. And you can see the trigger behavior. It can be a bit, uh, this is the part where I'm like, I do think it's the best, but I just sometimes have real fights with it trying to make it trigger the way I want it to trigger. It is completely resizable, which is a beautiful thing. And they have a completely clean full screen mode. You don't, oh, that's kind of funny. Um, you don't have to um, have these lines and these labels with the samples and everything on them, but you can if you want to. So we're back here on the main one. This is on the base, Harmer Mix Bus. And it's a, they're an FL Studio user because if you look in their videos, which are extremely informative, there's no manual, and but the videos are really well done. So there's still a few things that confuse me in particular, like the hysteresis control, the trigger phase. There are certain settings that these knobs will suddenly do things and then other settings when they don't do things or maybe they do do something and I just don't have the right setup. So these sorts of things confuse me uh, just a little bit. And I have some idea like hysteresis has to do with things that have happened before whatever current state you're in. So it, and they say right here, like 
um, an opaque measure of how resistant it is to change. The trigger threshold is another one that um, confuses me from time to time. There's no visual indication of this threshold. And I'm not sure if it's an up or a down threshold or if that's even what this is because there's also a trigger phase. So I'm just a little bit confused by some of these settings. So let's take a look here on a little bit more controlled of a scenario. I'm going to take these off and we're going to just look at the base for a second. And these uh, lines here, we can get rid of with the grid division spacing and we can lose those. And if you want to further customize how things look, how the lines are connected, I recommend leaving it on this one. But there are like useful tidbits to take away from these other two views. OK, I've switched it over to a sine wave just to show the dots. So these are the dots. If we play very high frequency. There's less sample points, so they become more apparent. If we go over and change them to linear, the lines, they're connected by lines. And then I'm not sure how to say this. This can show things like intersample peaking and things of that nature. So coming over here, our trigger modes, there are a couple different time modes. So we're going to change our window size. Now, if you want a really big window size, you have to change that variable in the settings. This will give you a big window size. We're going to zoom in. So here it is. And right now we're in spectral mode. Now in this mode, the trigger phase actually does affect it. And I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the only mode trigger phase has an effect on because it doesn't make sense to me in any of the other modes. Because uh, this uh, sine wave does have a phase and you can view a level on a sine wave as a, fa a point in phase. It's very easy to predict. And so if it's spectrally figuring out a sine wave to use to do things, then this would make sense to me. OK, so just real quick, there's time, which is like messing with time. All the trigger modes are available in time. I just click the interface. You can click drag. If you double click, it resets it. If you have it playing and you right click, it'll freeze it. But if you double right click, it'll keep it frozen. And then you can go ahead and, and look around, which is extremely handy. And then you double right click again to release it. Right, you can see the wave is growing. That's due to the auto gain mode. If we set it to none, it will say still. RMS will work on an average, which can get a little crazy sometimes. And then the peak decay will work much quicker and probably you're going to want to be on peak decay a little bit more often. Separate, you have a left, you can view the right, you can view the mid and the side. I like viewing separate. Um, if you're in a DAW that has separate, you know, left, right, and distinguishes between stereo tracks. This, I'm not sure how these options will be, if they'll all be there or not. Um, in FL Studio, everything's stereo by default. It's kind of weird. And then you have mid side. And you know, right, there's only mid because it's just a pure sine wave. There's no side information. But this one can be really cool uh, for checking stuff out. There's an envelope window, which has to do with this gain. If we change it to RMS, you see how quickly that grew. We bring this way up. You see how much longer that takes. Take this down. It figures out what it's going to do much faster. And I think there's also some sort of max thing that it can tell if it's freaked out. I don't know. These settings, they're, they're an interesting bunch. Input gain. And I'm not sure if this input gain has an effect on what happens after. Um, I've done some experiments and I don't think it does. Um, I think it might just be scaling, but it may affect the trigger threshold. No manual. <laughs> and even if there was a manual, I'm not sure if this stuff would be specified in it. Uh, grid division, which is all these grids, you get like DB values. And then you have your window size, how big, how small. It does keep the buffer around, which is nice. And then you've got these different modes. So time has to do with like literal time cycles tries to do a precise number of cycles. And it, I think the R stands for radians. So it's it's interesting to me. I don't know that it, it's forced to use spectral mode. So the way I think this does what it does is it performs an FFT. It looks for the biggest bin. It uses that as the fundamental and then it displays it out in radians. 
and then it computes like the number of samples required to show on screen to lock it to that number. Because you got one, two, three, four, five, and it says five. We bring it down to two, one, two. So that's my guess on how this works and why the other trigger modes are locked away. And then there's beats, which will do, which will change the window size to be quantized to the beat. However, um, for example, let's just look at where the kick's at and we'll change this to be like um, a quarter note. First, that looks sick as heck, right? Um, and, and sometimes finding these, the beat mode might be it. I actually find cycles can also sometimes have some really nice triggering. We'll go back to beats though. We'll change our input here to the drums. This is all, this is so crazy that this is in here and it's free. It would be so handy if this stood still and, and kept things, but instead it kind of moves around. But we have our other trigger modes. So window might be a better option. And you can kind of see how that works. So you could like have your bass in a separate channel and look at them and compare their phase and very quickly figure out the phase. Right now, um, if we brought in another thing like orchestra or whatever, maybe not orchestra, let's bring in the bass. I actually have the bass in here. Now this isn't the sub bass. This is just the, the big bass, the, um, the, the bass that's like the interesting sounding one. So if we overlay it, you can see the phase with this overlay channels. Line up with the drums. And then we can right click to pause it. And you can set up trigger modes to loop move less often. The envelope mode is also a good contender for this. And yeah, like pretty easy to spot stuff like this. They have a good demo in theirs. They, theirs, of course, they know exactly what they're doing. They programmed it. So they know all the buttons and knobs to set up for specific types of signals. Uh, but pretty interesting. There is uh, the zero crossing, which is just like it crosses zero up down, like your standard trigger. Almost every scope uses only this one. So it's really nice to have a bunch of these. The custom trigger is pretty handy. Um, it allows you to use a, a signal you choose to trigger it, but it behaves a bit differently. Sometimes it doesn't do anything. And so I think you have to be in a certain mode. OK, so now let me show you another thing. Um, and we're going to go ahead, we're going to open up this and we're going to set it up the way I'd like to have it set up. We're going to have orchestra, drums, a lot of bass first. And they go on in like the order you click them. It's actually pretty nice. OK, so we're going to go ahead, overlay the channels. I'm also going to have, yeah, yeah, yeah. All these settings are pretty fine. We are going to go to cycles. And they kind of scroll along the screen pretty nicely. I'm going to bring this all the way up. Again, this is influenced by your history behavior, but you'll notice the display. It like flips out when it reaches a certain point. Like it's fine. It's smooth. And it freaks out, tries again. And so what you want to do is I have a blank channel here. And if you set it to the blank channel, which is right now on channel seven, if you look in here, you know, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the empty channel, seven, eight. And then we play it. When it gets to the end, it never triggers. And sometimes it will jitter out of control with certain signals. And that's probably because the signal probably has gaps of silence and then no gaps of silence. And depending on your window size, it might be behaving all weird. So just having a track with nothing to trigger it, it's pretty nice because uh, it prevents that. You can also use a custom trigger in this case, and Cycles only has the spectral mode, but the custom trigger appears to have an effect in this scenario. So if we set this to, first if we just turn it on, and we set this to trigger much faster, like 400, it's basically like a zoom that we can use. 
and then we can hold down occasionally to capture stuff. So there's there's a million different configurations. Um, I think the presets are quite informative. There's a bunch of different ways to customize how it looks to color it by spectrum. Um, it is friggin' amazing. This is so cool. We didn't even go into the vector scope or the spectrogram, which are also cool. Um, just a really great piece of software. This is the website. And if you go to binary downloads, that's going to be where it is. It also has a source code. If you are a programmer and you want to give it a go, um, I'm not super confident with like C++. I'm like a JavaScript kind of guy. So I'm not sure how well I'd fare. I'd have, it'd be a learning curve. Other in here, if you wanted to appear as a VST3, he recommends literally just changing the .dll file to a .vst3, but it is a manual install, and this is what's available. You can see the last update occurred in the end of 2023. So I guess it's been a little bit more than a year, but the video is posted, the update video, like a year ago. Yeah, he this uh, I would recommend looking at this and the older ones are also like very informative to what particular things uh, do. The window mode will draw on across the screen, which can be a very handy thing. And this might be much easier to see like how the phase lines up with specific signals. But let me know what you think down below. I am a huge fan of Signalizer. Um, I'm putting it back at five stars. I've gotten a lot of reports. Maybe this newer one is more stable. A lot of people were saying it was crashing. Apparently on Max, there's a specific thing he talks about on his site where um, they, they may have some sort of a frame rate kind of deal. So you might need to take a look at that. But it is so cool. It has one of the most extensive trigger modes, trigger options and any free scope the fact that it's multi-channel i think it's the oh no no there's there's one or two others that are also multi-channel that are also free but usually that's a pro feature and the fact that it's on here and they're still developing it this is really cool honestly i'm super stoked about this particular project let me know what you think down below subscribe to that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day